I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome all of our Zoom folks. Let the record show all of the all selectmen are present. Consent agenda, warrant number 48. 511 2020, number 49, 526 2020, number 50, 526 2020, and number 51, 526 2020. Payroll register number 20, 514 2020, number 21, uh, 521 2020, and number 22, 528 2020. Move to accept. Second is read. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent. The warrants and payroll register as read. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. At uh, this time, I'd like to open a public hearing to consider an amusement permit for Avalon Enterprises doing business at Somerset Abbey. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is a uh, pretty routine process. Any establishment, in, in any establishment in Madison that has a liquor license that also offers live music is required by town ordinance to have a special amusement permit. So the O'Briens, uh, the owners of the Somerset Abbey, have uh, filled out the form, uh, they have submitted it, and they have submitted the fee. Uh, and so uh, we're taking any questions that anybody may have about this. Um, and we have a couple people uh, by Zoom, just to see, check and see if there's any questions that people might have about this special amusement permit. The only question I have is if they Stated when they're going to close the clock road. If they, if they, if we're making it with them that when they want to close that road, they'll let us know in advance. Is it Clark? The the Cl Clark yeah. Court is the one that done that. Between they've the, done that in the past. Between the post office yeah. and I'm trying to remember, when was the last time they closed the road? They closed it for a couple of the shows, and I believe the understanding is they are going to get a hold of me or Tim, and then we can call the sheriff's department to let them know. Okay. And, they're at what, what the hours were from like 6 to midnight or whatever the okay. case was. That sounds good. Any other questions? Any other comments on the special amusement permit for Avalon Enterprises? Any other comments? Any other comments? Seeing none, the public hearing be closed and we will entertain a motion to approve. Move, Move to grant. Second. We have a motion and a second to grant a special amusement permit for Avalon Enterprises uh, doing business with Somerset Abbey. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. And that toll placement, consolidated communication on Blackwell Hill. I apologize, Jeff, I usually put a copy of this in your box, but um, about 160 feet in from White Schoolhouse Road, so just a little bit in where, where Ken Curtis has his little staging area there, they're gonna, the consolidated is gonna put a new pole. I don't, I don't see that's gonna be. It's just a third of them all over town, so. Yeah. So they, it's a town road, so they need the approval of the town fathers. All right, for a motion? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second to issue a permit for pole placement for consolidated communication on the Blackwell Hill Road. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. I got one right here. We actually have two you know, places to sign up. No, this one's, one's their copy, one's our copy. That's right. Yeah. All right. Nomination to Municip Maine Municipal Association Legislative Policy Committee. Uh, for the last two terms, for a total of four years, I've served on MMA's uh, Legislative Policy Committee. Um, I need to be nominated to be considered to go back. Uh, and I am willing to serve. I'll nominate Tim Curtis to go to the Legislative Policy Committee for Maine Municipal Association. Second. I have a motion and a second to nominate Tim Curtis to be on the Maine Municipal Association's Le Legislative Policy Committee. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. This one only requires your signature. All right. That's why I don't sign it. Doesn't matter what we vote. <laughs> The acceptance of the meeting minutes from May 11th, 2020. 
Move to accept. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the minutes of the meeting of May 11th, 2020. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. All business, Mr. Moody? None, sir. Mr. Elias? Uh, not for me, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mr. Hey, John? Not for me. Okay. <laughs> Items of communication, Mr. Town Manager? Yes. Got a couple of things to catch up on. It's been a month since we were able to meet. So, just want to give you an update on the status of the town office. Uh, most of you have been, in, have been by uh, in one form or another. So, as of right now, we are open to the public. Uh, doors open from 8 to 3 on Mondays and Tuesdays and Fridays. On Wednesdays and Thursdays, we are open by appointment only. So generally, people know to call, and if they've got a transaction to do, uh, they make sure they get all their information and come and do that curbside. Uh, that will continue for this week and probably continue on uh, adding a day for the next couple of weeks. We will probably be back to five days a week open to the public by the first part of July, all things being equal. and. Um, we will still have the social distancing and sanitary guidelines. Everything is kind of wiped down on a regular basis. You will, you may have noticed that we are closing at noontime for about half hour, 45 minutes. That really has been put into place just to clean things down. Uh, if there's a steady flow of traffic, that they're, they're not able to wipe down everything. So they do that, wipe down the doors, wipe down, wipe down the plexiglass, and do all that at lunchtime. They also do that at 3 p.m. before they go home. So, so far, staff has responded well, um, and, and the public has responded well. So it seems like we're catching up. Uh, we took in a substantial amount of revenue from motor vehicle registrations in the month of May. Uh, a typical month of May for us is about $70,000. We took in a little more than $90,000 in, in May for vehicle registration, so we're starting to get caught up, which is a good thing for our revenues. How much of that stays here? Does it all stay here? The amounts there are as what as our portion. Yep. Right. right. It's our excise tax. Yeah. Um, so I've had ongoing conversations with the different people that organize different parts of Madison Anson Days. And the long and short of it is there's not any appetite for Madison Anson Days this year. The people that organize the parade and the carnival and the food festivals have all said they're not interested in organizing. They don't think it's the right time to do it. Um, the folks over at Anson, their selectmen have told them no. They're not going to hold any events for Madison Anson Days this year. So it appears as of right now there will not be any events for Madison Anson Days uh, as we normally know it, um, and unless someone steps forward to organize, the, the town just isn't staffed to organize an event that long. No. Good. We Does plan to include fireworks. Well, fireworks, um, they've already been paid for, and we could schedule them just about any time we, we want. Um, so we could do something around that weekend, we could pick a different weekend. You could do 4th of July, you could do Labor Day. So it's, you've got a little bit of flexibility on, on the fireworks themselves. Any preference? I mean, any, any, you can leave that up to us, or do you want? <laughs> I am going to uh, withhold any comment on um, I, anything I, from Madison Anson Days. I knew Days that should have been over here. Until, all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to withhold any comment on Madison Anson Days unless someone steps up to say, would say, I'd like to do this. Yeah. Because we're not going to get in a situation where people throw you 100 different suggestions, but nobody's willing to. To, to mm -hmm. do anything for them. I was mentioning just the fireworks. I mean, you're going gonna, you gonna to kind of get an idea of what somebody would like to do. And yeah, I could probably, I, I mean, to be honest, I haven't really thought about it that much, yeah. but um, they are paid for, and uh, usually that uh, gentleman's pretty easy to work with that does the fireworks display. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Now, these people who are, the door. these people who are saying no this year, right? have you gone forward to, to 2021. All, all of them has, have said we'd like to regroup for next year. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. next year they'll have time. And, and really, for certain aspects of it, you've got to be starting stuff now in, in June yeah. to be ready for all this. Yeah. yeah. Most of it. I just want to give a brief update to the board. Well, hopefully I'll have more information in coming weeks. Uh, I've been in regular conversations with Josh Henry from Go Labs the owners of the former Madison Mill. And um, they continue to work on a closing. They're trying to close on about $30 million worth of funding. Um, 
That was scheduled to be in April, then scheduled in May. Now it's scheduled to be closed on in July. Several factors are going on there. Part of this COVID-19 and lawyers and all that stuff it is slowing it down. But part of what they're, the, the window is closing it, to uh, do a lot of the renovating work at the site. If you're familiar with it, the heat at that site was the paper machine. The paper machine is out. They need to do heating infrastructure. The town has been working with them to uh, get some grants for some of this. Uh, we just received word of a $400,000 grant. We've asked for another uh, $600,000 grant. These are federal grants, federal government. The money comes to the town, then to the site for um, heating, uh, HVAC, electric, electrical work, that sort of thing. So hopefully I'll be able to give you some more detailed information on that in coming weeks. Just for your information, the school board will be holding their hand-raising vote meeting. There's been debate back and forth about whether they were going to do that in public. They are going to do it. Public, welcome to attend. They hope to, if they have more than 50 people, they'll hold it at the junior high in two different rooms. Uh, that's this coming Monday, the 15th, at 7 p.m. So they'll go over the school budget and people can raise their hands to, uh, to pass or, or up or down the, the school budget. Uh, one of the things of interest for us is to kind of attend to see how this works. Right. 7 p.m. 7 o'clock. They're going to initially hold the meeting upstairs in the um, cafeteria. That's where uh, Kathy and Julie Forbes will be checking folks in for registered voters. They're going to have a moderator. I believe Ernie Tilton's going to moderate it. And if they exceed 50 people, their overflow room is going to be downstairs in the auditorium. Now, the reason they're doing the meeting in the cafeteria overflow downstairs is there's a big screen and a projector downstairs. So people can watch the uh, proceedings downstairs. What I want to watch is how they take care of questions, answers, votes, that sort of thing, uh, between downstairs and upstairs with one moderator in one spot. So if they're able to do it successfully, successfully, maybe we'll pick up some things for town meeting. Right. All right. Let's go over some lawsuits. Uh, <laughs> some what? Lawsuits. Updates. Um, the court that was hearing David Trask's uh, age discrimination case has uh, ruled in favor of the town. And just for those of you keeping track, that, that was the fifth lawsuit involving David Trask since, since he left the uh, Sheriff's Department in 2015. Um, he has sued the Sheriff's Office, the Sheriff, the Town, um, the County, and uh, his own union. Um, whether or not he files another case, I, uh, I guess is up to him and his, his lawyer. But he certainly has exhausted uh, a lot of time. And money, I'm guessing. Yes. Madison Paper. Um, they have been granted an opportunity to, over the phone, make oral arguments to a judge in Somerset County. And this is going to happen on June 25th at 11 a.m. And I've been invited to listen in. So John Block, the attorney for Madison Paper, is going to make some oral arguments stating that Madison Paper believes that the State Board of Property Tax Review erred in their ruling in the town's favor back in April of 2019. What is the date on that? So this date is the 25th of June at 11 a.m. That will be a phone argument. Our attorney, Dave Silk, will offer uh, the town's position, and John Block will offer his arguments, hopefully soon after which the judge will render a decision. That judge's decision is only on whether or not the Property Tax Review Board was right or wrong in their decision. It's, it's not anything to do with the valuation of the town. Mm -hmm. If that judge rules in the town's favor, it is likely that Madison Paper will have Block appeal to the state Supreme Court, and the state Supreme Court will try the whole thing all over again, right back to what Madison valued the paper mill to be in, in April 1, 2016. So, just is there an end to this thing? I, I, I would hope the state Supreme Court is the end. I would hope that Madison Paper would get to the point where they would stop paying for these appeals. But I don't know. Uh, UPM has a lot of money around the world. Speaking of Jonathan Block, Jonathan Block 
has now signed on to represent Eagle Creek. And Eagle Creek is uh, taking us to court because of the denial to hear the abatement for this year, for 2019. Uh, if you remember, they appealed their valuation for 2019. This board deemed it um, denied by taking no action. Uh, in the meantime, Eagle Creek was talking with Shirley and, and myself and Dave about figuring out a value for this year. So somewhere in between, they feel that the town didn't communicate to us that that abatement was deemed denied. Our attorney, Dave Silk, says it's very clear it has, but they're going to go through the motions to try to get this appeal. At the same time, Shirley and I and Dave are working with Eagle Creek. We have a Zoom call tomorrow where we will discuss with them our findings for the valuation of the hydros for this year. And the hope is we can maybe wrap all of these things up together because the difference is with Eagle Creek, they're an ongoing taxpayer. Yeah. We, we want to have a relationship with them where we're not adversarial all the time. So hopefully we can get to that this year. And I think that is it for items of communication. Okay. New business, number one department head reports. We have a, a sheriff's report. Was sent to us. Uh, we have a report in here from Julie from the library. Um, I asked Don this afternoon, and my apologies for not getting the out to you. Fire department's oh, report. And any questions on any of those three? Yep. Mr. Moody? Where, where does the library stand on the roof? I think they, oh, I don't. So, so the, town meeting, the meeting. funding for the roof uh, is on the warrant for town meeting, and so that will have to wait for approval. We put out a, uh, a bid to four different roofing companies uh, last Monday, and we asked for those bids to be in by June 30th. Okay. So we're in process. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The only other thing I'd mention is I've been having conversations on and off with Marty Berry uh, with Madison Electric. Uh, just an update on that, that fire on the Jones Street uh, substation that, thank goodness, it was not nearly as bad as it could have been. Uh, the machinery in the, in the building that caught fire was not a transformer or not a conductor. It was the old diesel generator. Uh, I drove by there today. And, uh, so that, everything in that, in that one building, that's where everything was contained, it is beyond repair. And so Marty and MEW will be looking at options to uh, replace that generator. Very good job by everybody involved there, our mm -hmm. first responders and our and the electric works. Mm -hmm. the, first, uh, the first notice out of there was we were going to be down for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. It flew pretty pretty uh, fast on social type media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, what what was aired on social media was scary looking. Yeah, it was so scary it, looking. It looked like we were down for the count. Yeah. yeah. All right, Jeff. Mr. Road Commissioner, excuse me. Pardon? Mr. Road Commissioner, excuse me. The, um, the highway crew got the three weeks of spring cleanup all cleaned up. As you probably noticed, there was larger amounts of piles of trees and brush and limbs around the streets of town more than usual. So Tim and I have come up with a little YouTube video that Tim narrated to put on YouTube and kind of sort of educate the public of what this program is all about. Assuming uh, you have YouTube. Assuming you have YouTube, <laughs> which 95% of people do, George. Uh, and 98. That's on the computer, George. 98% of probably. 98, okay. I'm the 1%, right? <laughs> okay, we know. <laughs> so hopefully next year we won't have as quite a big amount of stuff. Uh, you know, it just costs the town and you know, accrue a lot of time and money to haul because we have to rehaul all that stuff somewhere else. Uh, I think you got you got hit with that snowstorm, right? And you got hit with the snowstorm. Yeah, quite a few limbs and trees. And yeah, I think you just had a bad. The whole wrong. thing was bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all the t gravel roads have been, re uh, yeah, all the gravel roads have been graded and dust controlled for the summer. Get finished up last week. 
Uh, we graveled 500 feet of the Kincaid Road, uh, put some surface gravel 1,500 feet, which is the whole length of Charlie Line Drive. Uh, we graveled the lower part of Western Avenue from the edge of the pavement to near to the farm. Uh, most of the guys are taking vacations here and there towards the end of the month to use up some time. Uh, the crosswalks in town were scheduled to be done tonight, but the gentleman called up and said he had a guy out, so they're going to postpone them until tomorrow night. The parking lot behind Reddings, which has been recently paved, which you've noticed if you've been behind there, will be striped in line tomorrow morning. Uh, the roads have been striped, all except for the, river, the other upper part of the River Road, the Golf Course Road, and part of the Blockwell Hill Road. And I don't know if you've noticed, we paved uh, Burke Street and Edward Street with some money that was left over from the capital projects, mm -hmm. paving project for this year. And the striping looks awesome on the roads out of town, everything. Those, it really makes a difference. You don't realize it until you see it, until you see it new. <laughs> so, any questions? So I was just noticing that where Angus Kenny lives on the corner, they still run into that ditch. I saw two tire tracks there. Yeah, morning. who comes around that corner? Is that a truck or something? No, people, he, he claims that people just go too fast. Even with that big gully, you guys, <laughs> he yeah. still, I don't get it. They ruined his lawn every end. They're still going in there with that ditch you put in there. Yeah. So they're going from Pine Street onto that street? Yeah. yeah. They're making that left turn and they're going right up on Angus's lawn and coming right around. Now you've got it grassed and, and seeded and A, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that road looks good. That's why you put that little rock there. So people run into that. And hits it. Yeah, we need a big rock there. Then you know who does it. <laughs> Anything else for the road commissioner? Thank you very much, Mr. Road Commissioner. All right, number two, discuss paving bids. So I gave you an updated sheet. The only change on that sheet is uh, I had uh, duplicated the tonnage from Pike and uh, uh, Fine Line. So we updated Fine Line's tonnage. So the price per ton is correct, the tons are correct, and the final price is, is correct. Um, I mentioned in my email, and uh, I, I think I put it in notes for George uh, as well, that when Jeff and I first opened up these bids last week, we noticed one was considerably lower. Uh, in, in price, uh, that's mainly paving. I think they're out of Canaan. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we also noticed that his quote for tons was much lower than everybody else. So Jeff confirmed with him that uh, he did miscalculate. And so with that in consideration, we hesitate to recommend him strictly as the low bid uh, because it wouldn't be fair for him to rebid. Uh, but at the same time, if we held him knowing that he's going to have to eat 300 tons at $70 a ton, there's $20,000. And there's only a couple of ways you do that. He either steps up and says, I don't want it to make any money, or that inch and a half you pay for becomes three quarters of an inch or an inch. So uh, that being said, the, 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 other, the other three bids, we, Jeff did have a chance to confirm everybody and they're all legitimate bids. Like, it's it's too bad we couldn't keep the money in town with the fine line, but you know a bid is a bid, and to me there's two quality pavers in there, and fine lines one of them, and the bottom ones is, is the other one. To me, as far as I'm concerned, they're the they two quality. I mean, we got, I mean, I, I think we got to think about what Fine Line does for us in town. I mean, they do a lot for us. Um, you know, I mean, they do the school uh, rolling every year. I mean, probably fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for each school. Um, you know, I think they do they do a lot of things for us with you know letting us use their in the Madison Anson days, letting us use their street sweeper. I mean, I think it's either been half price or no charge. And I don't really no charge. He lets us use it for the so, day with our operator on it. Mean, sometimes, sometimes I think we're gonna cut our nose off to spite our face for 
ten or eleven thousand dollars here. So, but I mean that's up to the that's up to the board. So I agree with you hundred percent, Al. It's the new show. The other thing is, is there, there, I can't count the number of times since I've been on this board that we have a discussion around this table and we say, guys, can you talk to Jimmy? Mm -hmm. We used to, did, we did that with Jeff Lloyd all the time. Can you talk to Jeff and, and talk through this project and give us a sense of what we think thinking so we, we know. And, and to have that expertise that you can call on, I think is just invaluable. Not only that, but, but the other thing is, is you know, this is somebody that's paid taxes in, the, in this town for a long time and continues to pay taxes. So I, I'm just, I'm with you guys. I, I, I think you, that's the way you go. Al, well, I'm going to make that a motion. Fine line paving. All right. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion for paving bids for fine line paving for, should it be the total? $279,186. Any questions? Mr. Road Commissioner. Well, just keep in mind that if you guys are going to do that, which is fine, uh, you know, next year the paving might look a little different. You, you're only going to have the other contractors are going to say, well, if you're going to keep giving to the local guys, that's great, but we're not going to bid anymore, and then you're down to one, one contractor. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. John? The only comment I would make is that I'm concerned about the fact that we've got we've got three bids at seventy-three dollars a ton and one bid at seventy-nine dollars a ton. How does that happen? That is varies on the price of, of the mix, who gets a better deal from the, from whatever plant they get it from. So So you might I might get a better deal than you, they might get a better deal than both of us, and, and so on. Elias. These estimates, Jeff, that they put down here, um, is that what they're actually going to? In other words, if we went with Pike, are we going to get 3,600 tons? Because they, they are, you know, you're looking at over 100 tons more. Is that going to be on our streets or is that just an estimate? These are just estimates. My estimate was, my estimate was 3,666 tons. See, that's what you got to look at, too. I mean, are you going to get 30 ton or are you going to get 3,500 ton? Mm -hmm. 100 ton of material, not on your streets. I believe right. Pike, more money. I believe Pike, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll do with some driveway lifts. They'll go in, like, if your driveway, a lot of contractors will grind a butt joint at the very end of the pavement, feather into it. Sometimes Pike will go further into the driveways, possibly four or five feet, depending on the driveway or the slope of the driveway and so on. You know, everybody does it different. That's how you come up with the variable, you know, mixes. Uh, guys will look at the roads different, such as the Father All Road, where it's so out of shape. Well, one guy might say it's, it's going to take, you know, two inches of shim here, where another guy might say it's going to take three or one. Right. <clears throat> so, that being said, with the Father All Road and the River Road, the upper part of the Solon Town Line, both of those roads, as you know, are very crowned and very out of shape and, and very well wheel running. So that's where you're getting your difference of mix as compared to putting an Aspen on Burke Street and Edward Street, because you know those streets are flat. Right. So that's, that, that was my other concern was like, Jeff, you know, we did this before with cemetery bids and we had problems. And if we're just gonna say, well, let's, let's go with, uh, you know, Jimmy Pinkham and Jimmy uh, Peters. Peters, yeah. You aren't going to get other people to bid. They're going to keep doing that every year. This is the first time we've done it. I know, but if I put my time and effort into this and you say, well, you know, he's the highest one, you're going to give it to him. Why am I going to bid? Right? That's my concern. Mm -hmm. Valid concern. And I like the tonnage he's got down there too, Pike. He uses it all. So if they don't use that, that just comes off the top. It does, it's on, it's on a late price. So if they come in, you know, under 100 tons, you're gonna pay up under the 100 or 50 or whatever the case may be. Now, how come we don't make these estimated tons all the same? Do you think it takes 36 
36.6. Last year, the last two years, we put we put the tonnage on there. This year, I was hoping the guys would show up and take a look at the roads because those two roads were very well out of shape. And a lot of these guys, what they're using now is Google Earth, so you don't have to travel up here and look at the road, measure the length, the width, and so on, and then put a price in. But you can't tell the road surface without looking at it. All right, so we have a motion and a second to approve fine line paving for $279,186. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Have three in favor, opposed? We have two opposed, so it passes. Uh, number three, we'll open a public hearing to discuss proposed changes to the town's shoreline zone, zoning ordinance. Mr. Chairman, I'd uh, like to thank the planning board for the work that they put in um, over the last year to update the shoreline zoning ordinance. In your packet, I put together a one-page sheet mm -hmm. that goes over the highlighted changes. Um, I'm sure Mr. Elias will want the 68-page document to read uh, in its entirety. I do. And I'm sure Mr. Savage has committed it to memory anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, so as you can see in that one-page summary, the majority of the changes come in Section 478-15, which is land use standards. And just to hit some of the highlights and updates, Structures permissible in resource protection, deals with footprints in resource protection, uh, updates requirements for decks, piers, and floats. Gives the planning board a little bit of a, uh, authority to approve some shoreline stabilization projects and updates, campsites, and RVs, and that sort of thing. Um, the most recent action of the planning board was to make a decision on section O, timber harvesting. Um, the planning board, and actually all planning boards that update shoreland zoning, are given three options when it comes to timber harvesting in the shoreland zoning. You can simply adopt the state standards and the state will enforce it for you. Or you can adopt the state standards and the state will help you enforce it. Or option C is you can retain your own standards, but you have to manage and enforce it yourself unless it becomes a pollution contamination situation. If there's a pollution contamination situation, the state will step in and help. So the planning board discussed this uh, at great length and determined a couple of things. One, over the years, this, this had not really been much of an issue. Uh, there were not a lot of issues re surrounding timber harvesting in the shoreland zone. Um, number two, when you put the side-by-side -side comparison of the state standards to the town's standards, um, it, it's, it's apples and, and oranges in, in complexity and length. Our state standards are two pages long, fairly simple. The state standards were much longer, much more complicated. So after much discussion, it was the summary of the planning board that they would stay with the state, with the local standards in this shoreland zoning uh, ordinance and it allows you to contract with a licensed forester. Part of the concern that the planning board has was how much of a burden are we putting on the town office right, right now without a code officer to try to enforce these timber harvesting standards that are probably outside of a code enforcement purview anyhow. But one of the things in our ordinance, the local ordinance, says that you can contract with a licensed forester to guide you through this process. And uh, I commented to the planning board that I, I believe that's an idea that the town office and the selectmen are comfortable with, uh, very similar to that we contract with a town planner to help our planning board now. So the, these types of arrangements are, are not out of the, out of the ordinary. Um, so the planning board voted to recommend that we stay with the state standard, or stay, I'm sorry, stay with the local standards, which is option three for timber uh, harvesting. Um, the only other new additions were in that same section 15, as I listed there, section Q, hazard trees, section R, ex exemptions, and section 
S revegetation requirements, and there, there are several new definitions uh, added. I know Mary Tomlinson has joined us by Zoom. Uh, Mary's the chair of the, of the planning board. Mary, did you have any additional comments on the shoreland zoning? No, none at all. Again, the, we had quite a bit of discussion, and our big concern, as Tim had mentioned, was the burden it would place on the town to enforce the forestry standards. And once Tim mentioned the town could contract uh, with a full licensed forester, then that solved that particular concern. Thank you. Ms. Moody. Tim, how much of a change are you talking about compared to what we have? Can we talk about the whole ordinance or just timber harvesting? The whole ordinance. Uh, what, I, what I'm asking, I guess, is sometimes it gets to the point that people that have camps on a lakefront don't own it. They have no say of what they can do. I mean, if, I mean, if they they got to place their tissue box in a certain space, you know, it, it gets to be ridiculous. I would hate to see that, you know, somebody's got three or four hundred thousand dollars invested in a camp or a home or what have you there, and there's nothing they can do without sixteen permits and fifteen hundred dollars worth of money to go with them, and they still, you know, they. Most of the time, I, I understand that these people are trying to enhance their property, not deter from it. And I'm 100% I'm as far as pollution or, you know, all of that goes. But, I mean, you go to a lake up this way, uh, uh, for example, Emden, you would act the Congress just to cut a, a, a dead tree down. I, you know, I don't want to see these people under those conditions and I and I agree that, that you know that we've got to have the audience and stuff like that but I don't I don't I don't I don't want to pass anything that's that's not common sense and going to be friendly right so to speak to those camp owners out there well I think the planning board did what they could in the areas that they could control to make it more user friendly and that's what happened in, in timber harvesting Everything else, all the other changes, are simply changes that were mandated from the state. In those occasions where the state gave you options, like timber harvesting, our planning board chose the, the least restrictive uh, option. But shoreland zoning is a, a tag team between the municipality and the state. Oh, yes. Because once this passes town meeting, it doesn't become effective until it's reviewed and signed off on by the DEP. So, all towns that have bodies of water are, are limited in what, in what they can do to loosen up the uh, process that's really handed down by the state. At any time you've made any revisions, have you got much feedback from those people that it impacts? You don't really get much feedback from folks on shoreland zoning at the, you know, at this stage, the public hearing and the right. and that. The feedback you get is when you're the code officer that has to go out and tell somebody they've got to move that shed, they've got to tear down that retaining wall, uh, they, they can't do this, can't do that because of the shoreline zone. I think most of the folks that I deal with when the calls I get in the town office, people know. People have a general idea that there are restrictions and they need to call and find out what they are before they get started on any projects. You've got a lot of folks around the lake that are buying properties that haven't been touched in years and they want to tear them down and build something new um, and in many cases before they buy they're calling us to try to get an idea what the what the rules are i, I just wanted to express my feelings about it. it's, it's so yeah. all right any other questions or comments any comments from shoreline zoning any comments from our zoom visitors yeah, I would just like to say that so far our interactions with uh, public, of course, we don't get feedback later, but over the years, I don't recall any negative response to any of our decisions that the planning board has made. Uh, we've had a good working relationship with the uh, landowners as well as the 
architects and the other division contractors. And most of the contractors are really well educated as to what the ordinance are, especially when they work across town lines. Um, so and it's all to protect the, the quality of our our lake here in the town of Madison and and it establishes standards across the board that everybody has to meet and in the end raises helps I believe to raise the property value of those um, homes on the lake. Yeah. And uh, so I think you know I'm going to tap the planning board on the back for, for all of the years that they have worked closely with individuals who have brought uh, requests before the board. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Thank you. All right, any other questions, any other comments? Seeing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Look for a motion to approve the shoreline zoning changes. Do we know what article that's going to be? Well, what I would do, you're going to look at the town meeting warrant at the next item on the agenda. So I would simply look for a motion from this board to pass the proposed shoreline zoning changes to, town to the town meeting okay. warrant. All right. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the shoreline zoning changes to town meeting. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. All right, number four, review town meeting warrant. So in your packet, you have uh, seven or eight pages uh, of the articles for town meeting. Uh, this will be July 13th, uh, coming up with about, excuse me, five weeks. <coughs> all your um, budget articles uh, are in there that the advisory board and the uh, select board uh, agreed on. Um, I do want to just draw your attention to a couple of them, probably near the back. To answer your question, Mr. Chairman, the Shoreland Zoning article is Article 29. Yep. Uh, article 30 is uh, vehicles and parking, if you recall. The board approved that. It's all, and I put it right in the warrant article. The only uh, change in that ordinance is to identify where two existing stop signs already are. So no changes there. And then the last article is the article about um, discontinuing a portion of Chamberlain Court in East Madison. So less articles than last year. It is less articles. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. We, where's Chamberlain? Off of Lower Mills Road yep. in East Madison, yep. it goes up. Used to go up to Evangeline Chamberlain's property, and there's a oh, new owner okay. there. Oh, we went through. We this. did. Yes. I, I gave you a color yep. color code map. Oh, it's pretty. We had colored pencils. Oh, you did a heck of a job. Just yeah. colorblind blind yeah. You're just protecting the entrance for the dogs. Right. Yeah. Correct. Good. Correct. Right. Okay. Sure. So, if the board is in favor of it tonight, you can pass. This town meeting warrant, and I even have a signature page for it. Um, you'll have another meeting before town meeting. If there is any other articles that need to be added, you can add an article up to a week prior to uh, with board approval. So it's whatever the pleasure of the board is right now. All right. Looking for a motion to approve articles 1 through 31. Yeah, I'll make that a motion. Sorry. We have a motion and a second to approve articles 1 through 31 to send to town meeting. Any questions? Seeing none, all, uh, Mr. Scott, go ahead. Just on the storm drains, uh, anything new from the sanitary district last year? It's down to 25,000, and last year it was 100 and something. You know, um, way back in the budget discussions, it's, it seems like a long time ago, but way back in those budget discussions, is, uh, Mr. Elias supported the idea of not putting aside any money because he didn't anticipate a fee coming from the sanitary districts to the town for this coming budget year. So that's why we just left enough money in there to cover maintenance when they come and they clean out those. That usually runs about 12, 12 13,000. And a lot of these meetings, the most helpful part is reminding us what we did <laughs> in the past. Uh, I talked with Dale Clark the other day. Um, they continue to have good luck with trucked in waste and that has really helped their uh, financial uh, situation. So. Dale and I uh, and Peter still stay in pretty good contact. I'm going to meet with them later this week. 
think we're, we're in a regular situation. We'd be at town meeting right now, I think. Town meeting would be tonight. So we would have done this before, so we would have remembered it. Probably. Mr. Elias. Did we have any money left <clears throat> in storm drains to carry over? We do. So are we going to carry that over? Well, well, in case, what I mean is in case they have work that, that we need to pay for. That will be part of the recommended carry forwards. Okay. Uh, when the newly elected select board has the opportunity to do that. Right. So this 25 will be added to that amount of money. To what, yeah, whatever there is to carry forward. Right. That will be added okay. That's all I want. Correct. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You won't be here. <laughs> no, but I want the sewer district to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I wear two hats. Right now I have two hats. That's it. <laughs> all right. Looking. Uh, uh, we got a vote, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we have, have a motion. motion. All right. All those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. If you want to sign the signature page. Oh, there is writing above it, George. That's what? There's, There's writing, writing above it, it, so you're not signing a blank paper. Okay, I, that's right. I won't sign a blank paper. <laughs> and it's on the long sheets, the legal sheets, so that I can fit Mr. Moody's name on the end of it. His name ran off the other sheets. It did? So. All right, number five, discuss deadline for the motor vehicle registrations. Uh, in your packets, I put a copy of the, one of the governor's executive orders, so I think it's number 53. Uh, she made this offer back in May that if towns wanted to set a date where registrations deadlines would, would actually, absolutely stop, they could. Right now, and I, I heard this from the Secretary of State last week on the, on the radio, Right now, vehicle registrations will expire on July 11th. So there's been all sorts of different dates floated out there, but this is what the Secretary of State says. Any dead registrations will be enforceable by law after July 11th. As a municipal body, the, gov the governor has given you the option of moving that date up if you so choose. You could move it up to June 30th. You could make it June 15th. Uh, so I talked with both the, the staff at the town office to see if that would be advantageous. That the rate people are registering cars right now, it probably wouldn't make a whole lot of difference. Then I talked to the sheriff, and the sheriff says, we're enforcing July 11th. So if the board were to make a change, they wouldn't enforce it. So that, that's what the sheriff's department's going to do. So I really bring this to you by way of information. If you want to take action on it, you can, obviously, but I don't recommend it. So. I would say we stay with July, July 11th. So if we don't take any action, it's July 11th. It is. Yeah. Okay. Right. And it sounds like they're coming in hand over fist, so there's no sense of poking the bear. Right. <laughs> uh, number six, discuss tax acquired property quick claim deeds. <laughs> That's what you guys signed was a quick claim deed. <laughs> so you need to make a motion on it. I had I both. Yay! <laughs> we didn't even read. We trusted. It doesn't happen to be trusty politics. So why don't you read this and make a motion on it. All right. This is Gertrude Ministries. Yeah, it's awesome. Out on the lake, all the back taxes are paid. So I see you got a little red on that one, Tim. That's that's the town meeting point. All right. I couldn't figure out why you said he had to go on long paper for Ronnie's signature. I'm looking at it. Like Legal paper, he said. Because right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting here looking for that quick claim deed because I know Kathy gave it. I mean, that looks good. All right, so we need, a, we need a motion for a quick claim deed for Gertrude Ministries uh, at uh, 144 Whittier Farm Road. So move. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to award a quick claim deed to Gertrude Ministries at 144 Whittier Farm Road. All That's those more. in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. And, now we, don't, and we don't need to sign it. It's all done. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> All right, number seven. I can discuss pers read personal, read personal, personal property property right off for closed businesses. Uh, in your packet, I put a couple of businesses that um, are no longer in business that have small amounts of personal property tax due, um, and efforts to collect them have gone uh, uh, not responded to. Um, the first one is Irene uh, Fennelson at uh, Kennebec Auto Parks. She paid her first half taxes, but that building's, uh, that building's empty and that business is closed. Um, the second account is for Key Bank, and that's at the Dunkin' Donuts um, location. And I checked with um, 
the Colleen, the owner of Dunkin' Donuts, and she confirmed that that was an old card reader when people come and pay with their ATM cards, and they got rid of that uh, a year ago. So KeyBank has been telling us that there's that uh, equipment is no longer there, and so Colleen confirmed that for me. Uh, the fifteen dollars there uncollected, and Darlene Taylor um, is consistently behind on her payments, um, but uh, she has sold that building. Now, during this time where barbers and hairdressers have been closed, it's been difficult to tell. Uh, but our mail to Darlene Taylor has come back as she has moved and she has left no forwarding address. Um, I do not know whether the person that bought it, I've tried to reach out to the person that bought the property, if they plan to open it up as a hair salon. If so, we will open up a new personal property account in that new business's name. So I, these are the three I bring to you for discussion, and I would recommend that they are uh, written off with all appropriate fees and interest. I'll make that motion. Second. Right, we have a motion and a second to write off a personal property for Lyle and I, Irene and Fennelson at 88 Main Street and Key Bank National Association at 164 Main Street. And then for Darlene Taylor at 85 Main Street. Doing business is Sheer Delight Hairstyling, which is located, I guess, at 40 Main Street. Right. Any questions? Mr. Elias. Kim, is this all that we have? I mean, our businesses pay right out, right? I mean, we, we, we do. We, we collect from about 185 businesses, and I'm only chasing about four accounts. So um, this only amounts to not even $200. That's right. 175 bucks. There you go. I mean, that's pretty good for a town to have that. Yeah, so it's more to have you chase it. We, right, right. right. We, right. Have, right. we have $780,000 in personal property, and of course, a lot of that is Eagle Creek and right, Sierra right. and that sort of thing. But. Um, I, I just got the, the 2019 report, and so the 2019 unpaid personal property is less than 10 accounts. And uh, yeah. these, these are three of them. Um, but for the most part, with the exception, everybody knows, with the exception of Al Levante over at Adenac, right. he is the If you look in your town report, he is the notorious one that's always there. And I've even I'll reached out to him with an offer that you approved last summer. And he hasn't responded to me. So, other than that, everybody is paying up. And they're pretty consistent. And I think part of it is they, they know that we're following. That. Yeah, so. All right, so all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Um, I believe we are going to take citizens' concerns. Uh, sorry, selectmen's concerns. Mr. Moody? Yes, I do. All right. Tim. Uh, I was up to Forest Hill the other day, and it hasn't looked any better than what it looks right now. Oh, and he's done a fantastic job, and, I, and I'd and i like to see him get an attaboy. attaboy. Uh, my other thing is, I'm back again with the same concern that uh, land that we got off of Mitchell, she's growing up pretty hard. I think we need to bush hog it again. Cemetery? So yes. you, you talk about that section that's that's up on the hill there? Yes. Okay. Is that something that we push on? You talk, you know where she's talking about Forest Hills, that other section that's undeveloped. That big field, you mean? Yeah. Yes. Between there and Colin Forest? Yeah. Two years ago we went up yeah, there. Yeah, well we used we used to take the town did with our with our flail mower, but we haven't been using that all that much and um, just because it takes the life out of the machine, which is our sidewalk machine. So, you know, I, I guess we could look into it, and we have looked into it in the past about hiring somebody to push hog it. Yeah, I bet that's what I'm talking about. Continue yeah. to investigate that. We can, I could look. Yep. If somebody would rush on. If it. not, it's it's well, it will grow to trees. It's right. going to grow to trees, yeah. and it's going to cost mm -hmm. you twice as much, or if not more. I'd like to yeah. see that addressed if, if possible. So, well, I'll pass it along. I'm all set. Mr. Savage? Good. All set. Sushan? All set. Now, in front of the town office, that work's being done by the state to fill in, I don't know, say, what are you working on a manhole or catch, catch basin? Catch basin. There's a couple catch basins that Jeff has pointed out to DOT, and they're, they're happy to oblige Jeff. 
<laughs> they are going to overlay that road from Lights up Western Avenue, Park Street, and then from Park Street to the cemetery. And they're skipping the section from the golf course road to from the cemetery. And then from the golf course road, clear to Cash is the 150. They're over 143. 143, yeah. And in town, they're fixing that tax basin in front of the town office. They did that ditch line so that water gets down in front of the police department. And fixing a catch basin on the corner of uh, the corners hall is. And then they're going to do something with the uh, corner of uh, Hardy Street and Park Street, where there's always an ice hole every winter. Hopefully, that will improve that this coming winter. Are they raising the catch basin? They're raising all. They're not raising. The, they're raising the manholes. Yeah. Yes. On Park I Street. I no, coming on to going into going into Hill Street. No, those they are not doing those. Those were done a few years ago. So they're just going to overlay that. They're going to build match into them. Yes. So that's a hell of a hole. Man. It's an awful hole. If, if that lady did park that red car on the corner there, you could you could bottom out a vehicle making that corner. If somebody's coming out of Bottom Hill Street right. and making that corner, if that red car wasn't parked there, it, which it is most of the time, <laughs> um, if you if you try to avoid that, then you hit that manhole. It's my wife's camera will will bottom out there. If, if we're not careful going around that corner. I could ask them, but I when we had our meeting a few weeks ago, they weren't going to do it any of those two because they did those a few years ago. They got markings on the road, so it raised two inches. On that one? Yeah. Well, they could possibly be raised. That's, what, that's why I asked the question because it's a problem, and if they're gonna if they're gonna be going up, if they're gonna be doing overlay there, that was the time to fix it. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know how to They do must it. have changed their mind, but so, yeah, I'll look into it. If you would, because then, yeah. like like I say, if she didn't park her car there, you, you'd be hearing people banging the undercarriage of their car all the time. So it sounds like with what we're doing, plus what, what they're doing, there's a lot of work going on here. Oh yeah, yeah. in town. Yeah, that's good. That's good, that's a good thing. Citizens so concerns? Uh, Haas or Mary, any concerns to ask about? All right. All right. Have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? All in favor. The motion carries. The meeting is adjourned at 728. Thank you, folks. So we're doing another evening two weeks.